As we noted the last time, we're going to come back to our common midpoint gather, the uh, traces, the trace combinations that provide information from a common um, reflection point. Uh, if the layer's flat or a common midpoint, if it isn't, we'll, we will be talking uh, about the dipping layer problem uh, probably in the next video. But uh, we, what we want to do now is, is look at what it is that we get what, what effectively are we getting when we go through this sorting, uh, animo correction, and stacking uh, process? What's, what's the geomet what kind of a trace are we working with? What is its geometrical relationship to the uh, uh, subsurface? And uh, so here we're, we're just going to come back again kind of as a review of some basic ideas we've uh, sorted our data, in this case the 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11 combination. We're just referring to them as traces 1 through 6. Uh, we can see, as we noted earlier on, that the time-distance relationship for the reflection event in a gather is, is basically like that in a shot record. It's hyperbolic. Uh, these are the uncorrected traces. And then these are the corrected traces. So we've applied an NMO correction and uh, flattened them all out. So we had some noisy data. Uh, we wanted to do this because the data is noisy, because we aren't getting a real clean or uh, as clean a view of the reflection event that we'd like. So we uh, NMO correct them. And in this process of NMO correction, we've basically corrected the arrival times so that they're all effectively straight up and coming in at a straight up and down time. This 2h over v. So right away that's telling you something about the geometry, uh, the geometry that we're going to get in the uh, stack trace. So remember the stack trace is just the sum of the amplitudes for all the six traces in the gather sample by sample as we go from let's say zero all the way down to the total um, recording time. And uh, again, the reason that we're doing this is to enhance the uh, signal to noise ratio. We don't actually plot up the sum. We usually normalize it or take the average. We are, we, otherwise, we'd have a signal which would be very large. And then, of course, the, the noise would be much larger as well. So. So the sum of all these traces, uh, sample by sample, is um, usually averaged or normalized. And uh, uh, so we get a, a trace which looks similar in terms of relative amplitude to, to what we have in the individual traces in the gather. So uh, again, this stacking process is just a summation across the traces in the gather at each sample time. And we're just showing here the process of averaging. So we just have one over the number of traces in the gather, six in this case. And again, we'll emphasize that um, when the traces in the gather are NMO corrected, they all come in at the same time. Or, you know, if the, if the velocity was good, if your correction was good, then the arrival times for all the events for each trace in the mid, common midpoint gather should be about the same. And that carries through to the stack trace as, as well. So. so we started off by asking, OK, what is the effect of this NMO correction? And I think you've seen that in the process of uh, correcting these traces, we, we look at the NMO corrected uh, gather. Uh, after NMO correction, all of these, uh, the arrival times of all these events come in at uh, approximately the same time, and the effect of the NMO correction is to take an individual record, an individual source-receiver combination, and move them over to the midpoint. So you can see source 6, trace 1, receiver 1, source 5, uh, corresponding uh, receiver record 3, are getting moved over here to this uh, common midpoint. So the traces in the common midpoint, uh, we're, we're moving the um, source and the receiver combinations to the midpoint, and that the effect after NMO correction is that, again, all the um, 
event in the NMO corrected uh, uh, record come in at about or hopefully the same time again if the velocity has been a good one. And uh, we were it's hard in a, at least a, as an introduction to discuss some of the additional issues associated with NMO, the NMO correction. We're going to probably get some stretching in here that has to be compensated for, but uh, we're just going to assume that we don't have any stretching in these traces and that the uh, sum gives us a nice uh, higher signal to noise ratio uh, view of the reflection event off this uh, surface. And again, that we're just taking the uh, source receiver combinations and moving each, each of them to the midpoint. And that's effectively what we have for each one of these uh, source receiver combinations shown uh, geometrically here. We're taking uh, each record and eliminating the additional travel time that we have from shot one to receiver 11, shot six to receiver one. We're pulling all these sources and receivers over to the midpoint so that the up and down time, the T0 time, all the arrival times are, uh, are equal, equal to 2H over V. Okay, so the effective trace that we end up with then is what's referred to as a normal incidence um, trace. You can see that it's a it's a normal instance. Uh, we've taken all the sources in the receiver, so geometrically we've arranged all the sources in the receiver so that they're located at the same point. So if we detonate a source and don't blow up the receiver, then the ray path will go down to the reflection point, reflect at a right angle, and then come back uh, directly to that receiver. Of course, we get a wave front. Again, if we did have receivers over here, we would see, but we're, what we've effectively done geometrically is take all the receivers and plop them over here at the midpoint, take all the sources and plop them over here at the midpoint. We don't actually have to blow up the receiver to get a, uh, a normal incident a seismic record, but uh, uh, that's effectively what we've done. We've um, uh, positioned the, corrected the data so that all the arrival times are equal to the T0 to H over V time in the uh, stack trace. So this would be our a single stack trace compiled from these six source receiver combinations after NMO correction and stacking, summing all together. Would be this event that comes in at the vertical up and down time here, or the normal incidence uh, travel travel time. So sometimes uh, this stack trace can be referred to as a coincident source receiver trace or a normal incidence trace. So normal incidence in the sense that since the uh, sources and the receivers are right on top of each other effectively, I mean if, if the data has been processed so that that's the case, uh, that we do have a normal incidence. We, we are looking only at normal incidence uh, reflection events. So here we've got a threefold data set. Um, again, we're illustrating that the process of NMO correction carries all the sources and the receivers over to the midpoint, uh, common source receiver record. And uh, we go through the stacking process and, and we get a normal incidence record at each point along the surface. And all we're doing now is just showing the compilation in a simplified schematic sense of all the uh, source receiver combinations that provide information from common reflection points along a particular surface. We're still keeping things simple in the sense that we're looking at a horizontal reflector here. These are normal incidents, so the uh, ray path comes down, strikes the interface at a right angle, and then is returned back to the receiver. And this would be the stack section. We're just showing a little wavelet in here uh, just to uh, illustrate um, uh, something that might be a little bit more realistic. We, we haven't put any noise in here, but we're seeing a reflection event from an approximately flat surface with all arrival times equal to 2H over V, the thickness of the layer, two times the thickness of the layer. These are two-way times. They are the down and up time. So the common midpoint acquisition that we've 
been talking about it, it seems fairly simple, but I think you can see just looking at, if you're collecting data on a road, and you have a bend in the road, that for source three, receiver one, we've got a midpoint here. For source two, receiver three, we have a midpoint here. Source one, receiver five, we have a midpoint over here. So these are certainly, this is another way that the midpoints in the gather are not from the same location. So they're going to be scattered in the location of your midpoints that are going to be associated with the geometry of your uh, source receiver layout at the surface. And you can see a uh, uh, fairly uh, a much more complex example here. Uh, over here, here's a bend in the road, and you can see where source re different source receiver combinations at uh, completely different places along the uh, road give you uh, information from a common uh, midpoint. So, uh, so often what happens when you're collecting common mid midpoint data is that you will bin it. A bin means that you will throw all the traces that occur within a certain radius of a given point. You will throw them into the gather. That, what we've been calling the common midpoint gather, is not actually a common midpoint gather because of the geometry. Um, so, so these common midpoint gathers, especially if you have irregular acquisition geometry, are going to have some scatter. Uh, hopefully it's not too much, uh, so that when you go through the uh, NMO correction and stacking process that uh, you get an accurate representation of the reflectivity and the uh, reflective properties of the surface in this region, the, the stacking bin. Okay, so uh, usually, you know, as noted up here, we would, uh, in order to, to make things simple, in order to make the sorting simple, in order to get uh, records that provide information from approximately the same location, we would set up our sources and receivers on a, a regular rectangular grid, let's say, so that, um, so that we aren't going to have this kind of a problem. But sometimes you can't get away from it. You know, if you're in rugged uh, territory, rugged country, uh, maybe you can't uh, get your sources and your geophones in a nice straight line or on a nice uh, series of straight lines that form a grid. So, so this is not an unrealistic problem. This is one that maybe is becoming less common today since we can take our uh, uh, receivers, we can fly in with helicopters. Uh, we don't have to connect all of our receivers by cable back to a, uh, to, to a common um, recording unit. Uh, we can use uh, transmitters from each of the receivers, but this this should certainly be kept in mind because probably even in the best of circumstances you're going to have some scatter even on a rectangular grid that you, you need to be thinking about. So next time we're going to talk about the uh, dipping layer response uh, in the CMP gather. We'll just uh, limit our discussion to the CMP gather. We've already talked about the uh, dipping layer response and shot records. And we're also going to talk about a, an event that we mentioned uh, right at the very beginning of our discussions of ray tracing. And that event is uh, the one that we talked about uh, is the diffraction event. And we haven't discussed the time distance relationship for the diffraction event. And that's uh, something that we'll, we'll do next time. And we'll look at the uh, time distance relationship in a uh, common midpoint gather. And we should probably also include the uh, diffraction response in a shot record because we haven't, uh, we haven't done that so far. So thanks again for joining us and uh, uh, hope to see you next time.